If you're trying to improvise but you feel like you're stuck and you're not moving forward, then it's probably because you're not getting enough skills out of the things you practice. So what we'll do today is we'll take a phrase that I heard from Barry Harris and we'll figure out how it works and we'll look at so many different ways to vary it that you will have to become skilled to do it in all kinds of different ways. If you haven't seen me before, my name's Sean. I studied with Barry Harris for close to 20 years, but my main specialism is helping people to get fluent in the first place. So if you're interested in that, then come and join us on Jazz Skills. The phrase that we're going to look at sounds like this. So it's over A minor 7 to D7, a 2-5 progression, but interestingly starts on the third beat. 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and 1. There's so much in there, let's start to unpack it. So this isn't going to be a lesson on the Barry Harris scale rules as such. I teach that on Jazz Skills and we have some of that on YouTube as well. But suffice to say, he would play the D7 scale over A minor 7 to D7. And he would often say that 2, 5, A minor 7 to D7 just means 5, okay? and therefore just the five scale, the D7 scale. But he also has rules on how to descend those scales. One of those rules is if you're descending from the second degree like this, then you can either put no extra notes in like this, or you could put two extra notes in. So extra note, scale note, extra note, and then down the scale. And that's what he does in this phrase. So when I heard it, I went bang, okay, I know what that is. I've got to show you. So we go one, two, three, and four, and D7 scale. Now when we get to the third of D7, we are playing basically the diminished chord that goes with D7. You'll see me talking about this a lot here on YouTube. And often we'll play jumps like this. If you've seen any of my transcription videos about Bud Powell, that happens a lot in his playing too. Now, it could have gone down like this. But then we have what's called a pivot, where we jump instead of going down. We jump like that. Half step, back to the G major. So, components are super important when you're learning improv phrases. Here's the way to fail at this and get nothing from it. The way to fail at it is just to transcribe the phrase or look at it in a book or whatever. Just try and play it and then try and play it when you're playing live and maybe carry it off, maybe not. The way to win at it is to start thinking components. So the first component is one, two, those half steps down, scale, jump up to the diminished note, another diminished note. And that's the second, or depending how you think of it. I mean, I think of this as a Barry Harris scale because I know that rule is embedded in the scale, right? So for me, that's one component. So one, two, down the scale, diminished chord, half step back to land on the fifth of G, a chord note. Those are your three components. Start thinking like that and you'll already begin to grow. Okay, so here's the whole phrase. One, two, three, four, one, two. Now let's see how we can vary it in so many ways, not just because it gives us more to do, but because approaching it from different rhythmic angles will strengthen our rhythm in general and in our playing of this and other phrases so that we're getting the skills that this phrase can teach us and using those in different ways and those things come out in our playing. So as I often say, I'm not worried whether I ever play this particular phrase live or not. I hope I will. If I don't, I'll be practicing in a way where I'm emulating those skills anyway like that stuff starting on the third beat using the diminished all that kind of thing so let's see what I mean let's say five variations of this and let's see where it goes so first variation will be one two very simple just skipped the second note one two three skip that one, right one two three four and one and two and three and four and one. Things like that can really swing. I use a D6 over a G for a G major seven voicing. It's like taking the G and moving it up a scale step or a whole step, right? So sometimes I'll come out like that as well. Okay, fine. What else could we do? Let's see. OK, 
Okay, two different ways to use that kind of turn sound. So the first one is, if you use an eighth note triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, which a lot of people rush, be careful about that. But if you use one of those, then what happens is it takes care of one of those extra half steps that we put in. One of these. You don't need them anymore, or you don't need one of them. So it could be like this, one, two, three, and four triplet, one, and two, and three. We've landed here at the same place at the same time. That's what I mean by it takes care of the extra note, right? So here goes. One, two, three, and four triplet. One, and two, and three, and four, and one. Okay, that's a variation. So now we've got two variations. Let's try the third variation. I'm just doing this as we go so you can see what the thought process is. Okay, if I go up a note and come back, let's see what happens. I don't know until I do it, and I'll explain it after I do here goes one, two. Okay, fine. So by going up and back, landing at this place is the same as saying the same number of notes, right? Same amount of notes is the same thing rhythmically to land on the C. So I'll try it. Here we go. One, two, three, four, one, two. Okay, now let's see if we can change some things further down. Instead of jumping from the bottom of the diminished to the top, I'll keep going down the diminished instead. See where that leads me. It should be the same phrase. Instead of saying, it'll be also fine. Okay, one, two. Fine. If I don't use the two extras and I just use one, then I'm not going to get here at the same time, clearly. But well, that will give me a chance to use something down here. You're going to see one, two, one and two and three. We use the F. So now we have a surround, also known as an, an enclosure. We could keep the rest the same. OK, let's try that. One, two, three, four, one, two. And that's how you vary a phrase in so many different ways. We could go on, <laughs> but that's just to give you a taste of how we vary the phrase rhythmically, melodically, in the components, the way the diminished is cut. And by doing that, you're making it your own anyway. So you're learning, you know, how jazz works. But also because you're tackling it in so many different ways, you're getting to know the rhythm better. You're getting to know the phrase itself so much better. And you're getting skills in using the diminished, in pivoting and jumping in the diminished, in adding extra notes, in using triplets, in all that kind of stuff. Hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, come and see us on Jazz Skills, where we focus not just on information, but your transformation will get you fluent by doing the right things in the right order with support from me. We've got a wonderful community as well. So hope to see you there. Thanks for watching and bye for now.